let's make our cover. This is the recording for the December Daily 2022. I was doing it live and we had a lot of pixelating and there was a lot of um, problems. And I've got a beagle here crying at me. He wants to go to bed. You're all right, Wilbur. But we're going to get our cover created. I used craft in the live video. And the live video is still, I'll leave that up on my YouTube. That way you can access it. But this will be hopefully a lot clearer and easier to follow. I don't know what's going on with my cameras. So for this one though, I'm going to use brown. And if you have the December daily kit, then you have your cutting guide. If not, I'll be giving you the measurements as we go. And I've done some of the pre-work. So it won't um, take quite as long. So we have two eight and a half by nine inch pieces of chipboard. I've already done the wrapping on one. And on the other eight and a half by nine, which these are our covers, I will do that on camera with you. And also the spine piece will make the hinges. And then we will also do the pages. So we're going to start with uh, the two chipboards. Like I said, they're eight and a half by nine. And then your spine is three and a half by nine. Chipboard to wrap, you're going to want two pieces that are 10 and a half by 11. Let me check the size here. One piece that is six and a half by 11. I'm going to go with that piece. So let's start with the wrapping. And it's nighttime. My lighting just really sucks. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, guys. It's time to get some uh, professionals in here and check out for our recording. Of course, I have this light, and it's kind of bright. So let's just, there we go. That helped a lot. Okay, let's just move that over. So... Um, chipboard will fit perfectly on the cardstock so we have an inch around and I'm using my spacers like I said I've already laid down my chip my um, score tape so if you ever get chipboard like that just take your file and clean that off a little bit sometimes the blades for kits when we cut there's so many and it just sometimes it, it it does that when you're going through the stack. Like I said, I'm using the brown, the artisan brown on this one. Spacers will help keep everything nice and straight. I'm just going to pull my camera down this way a little bit. Oops. There we go. And using, oh, I think I know if we zoom out a little bit. The edge of your chipboard will help to also keep the cardstock straight as you're pushing against it. That way it will go exactly where you want. So we're going to burnish these edges. I will go a little bit faster than I did on the live because you can stop and you can also go back to where you need to go back if you need to check things again. Okay, both pieces are done identical. Your front and your back cover. There's my, there it is. When we're done, it will look like this. And we've created squares by burnishing the edge of our cardstock onto the chipboard. And now we're going to just remove those corners. Now by doing this, you've already created um, exactly where the chipboard is and where the cardstock needs to go. So you don't have to worry about cutting your corners too close to the chipboard and then having a hole. Now one thing I'm going back and doing, because you're going to, if you can see, you'll see it just wasn't quite tied up on that edge. There we go. And I like it to be nice and tight. And I'm going to 
just go over that score line a little bit. Gently there. Now we can go ahead and trim our corners. So we can wrap this. Now see how that's, I don't know if you can tell it's sticking over the edge. So I know that we need to clean that right up. Opposite edge. Whether you're doing this for the December Daily or you do this for a different album, this is the exact same technique that I use and have been using since 2019 when I changed it up a little bit and I changed it out of the needs of um, they were older ladies. Of course, I'm an older lady. What am I talking about here? Um, no, they really needed an easier method than their chipboard. Because you can imagine with eight and a half by nine inch chipboard, it's pretty long. And what happens is you need a big, long work surface. And they were struggling and said, isn't there an easier way? And I'm like, there's got to be an easier way. So our lay flat method was born. Now let's do the opposite sides. need to slow down. You might hear Wilbur snoring. He went and climbed back in his bed. He really wants me to go to bed, but he's going to have to wait till we make our album cover. Okay, not nice and neat, nice and tight. I just love, I love the look. So, why do I have all these pieces everywhere? Okay, there's my front and back cover. And then for the spine, the spine, we have a one and a half inch on the left side and the right side. I still only have an inch top and bottom. And our spine is three and a half by nine. Once we have all that off, now you can use glue or you can just use the score tape and go around your edges. I love the score tape sheets. As you can see, it just makes things so much faster. Put my spacers away. Let's just make sure everything's down where it belongs. So I'll start on the short end. Right here at the top. Hold in the bottom. Now I want to take 
these are going to be what we attach the front and back cover. So we don't want it to be stiff when we go to attach our cover. So we're going to work it both ways. And then I'm just going to lightly take my bone folder into that and kind of form it around the chipboard. Kind of gives it that defined look. But it also helps to kind of break those fibers. See how much easier it will be to move. Then we're going to cut out our triangles. They're not triangles, they're rectangles. <laughs> just to the corner of the chipboard there. Well, come on fingers. <laughs> it's like my brain didn't engage there yet to continue cutting. Okay, we still need to miter our corners. Uh-oh, did I go through my chip, my cardstock? Even if I did, let me check this. I almost did right there. got to be careful. Um, I need to be careful. I am heavy handed. we're okay. going to I'm going to check this one more time I think I'm I think I really am okay at winter and I did explain this so it is winter time sometimes we get pops I just call them pops because it's not cracked through and it it has to do with the weather changes in our paper We want to attach our cover and I am going I'm going just right up to it of course not over it just I'm kind of butting it Let's see right where it bends there and let's add our adhesive again staying I'd say that's about an eighth of an inch from the chipboard. You don't want to get glue up there or it does show. Even though it dries clear and we're going to cover paper. But. over just 
push so that we get it all adhered. Clean up those edges. That's kind of where I, I did go a little heavy. I'm lucky it didn't go through. I'm making sure I get the right side on there because we have a half inch difference. Again, don't let it, don't let your chipboard come up over the, the seam there. Clean out that glue. Now we have our cover together. It is a little bit weak. We do need to put a, a piece of cardstock in there, but I'm just going to add my clothespins right now and let those corners dry. We're going to create our hinge piece. And our hinge is eight. Okay, those are those aren't the same. Our hinge piece is the eight by eight and seven eighths. So I did four of my pages. How on earth am I losing things? Eight and a half by eight. Eight by eight and a half. And I needed eight by eight and seven eighths of an eight piece. Did I do the wrong one? No, I did not. One's a hinge, one's far inside. Oh, one's far hinge. Oh, I know where that one is for the inside. I've already covered it in my cardstock. I mean, I've covered the cardstock in the score tape. So let's go ahead with our spine. And one thing, if you didn't watch the live, then you'll notice I put on the cutting guide that we score at eight. We don't score at eight. Boy, that's right. We don't score at eight. This white paper is pretty bright too. We don't need to score it at eight because it ends at eight. But we want to have our eight across the top of our scoreboard. And we want to score at, um, it's a little bit different because we do have um, three quarter inch gussets. So we're going to score at one half inch and one inch. So those two are our first set of hinges. Then one and three quarters, two and one quarter. Oops, that was two and one, two and one quarter. Okay, we'll ignore that one because I'll cover it with paper, so we're okay. Two and one quarter, two and three quarters. Oh, good, those are hinges. We're good. Two and three quarters, three and one half, four. Four and one half. Five and a quarter or five and one fourth. And we have five and three fourths. Then we have six and one fourth. Seven and seven and a half. So the half inch are hinges, gusset, hinge, gusset. So the gusset's bigger for this book because we have some pretty thick pages. And then before we do this, I like to take just a hair off. I would like to take a little bit more than that. I'm going to use my big cutter, but I'm, let's see. Yeah, I need to use the big cutter. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit off of each edge. I mean, 
just a sliver. And that's so when we put everything together, they will lay. I'll show you. I'll do that first one. Um, do you see that way it's sitting on the inside of our score line? It doesn't come over the edge. Sometimes it will, depending on your scoring tool. Um, so this will give you a better idea. So when it comes up into a hinge, it's not protruding on the bottom. Because if it does, it's going to get bent up. And I've had that happen. Okay, I've just got that weird score line there. So now I'm pinching the half inch pieces together. Only your half inch together. Back and forth. So we have the three quarter inch gusset. And we're going to pinch these next two together. And I, I do like to push against the paper to help keep it straight. So we have our gusset and then our next set of hinges. So now we end with our next, our last set of half inch. So that's a good example. See, it's almost to the bottom. So I'm going to take just a little bit more off of this. Because if not, when I put it down, see, it will get smashed and it will bend up. Let's glue our half inch pieces together. And I do get it in the crease there. So basically, I'm just pushing back and forth. Uh, we'll go back. When you're using the wet adhesive, if you're not, if you're using score tape, that's great too. Um, for me, I don't know if it's our dry climate; it just doesn't last. And I've had to repair more books because it just loses its stickiness. I love it though in the sheets for my covers, but um, I really like the glue. Super permanent. Nothing's gonna. These are not gonna come apart. But you want to get that glue. So you really want to get it um, spread out in there, like your wallpaper paste. You gotta have it spread across the wall. And so there's no bubbles or anything like that.
And our last one. Now, because it's glue, I like to go back and forth. Glue has polymers, some fibers, who knows? But I know it has, you know, as it starts to harden and whatnot. So I like to work these hinges. Now, in the sample that I did my walkthrough, and I explained this on the live, I did double mat my spine before I put these down, and I don't this time, because you really can't see it. And you'll see after we put our center piece in, I'm going to use those on my spines, I mean my hinges, um, you're going to see what I mean. The hinge pretty much covers enough of it that it doesn't need that double matting. And it will just save you some paper. So this is the, it's underneath, if you have the cutting guide, it's 8 inches wide and 8 and 7 eighths of an inch long. And I do like to use my score tape sheet on that also. If you're going to use glue, I would put score tape along the edge here and here and here. And then up here, don't get glue in those crevices because it will soften it, weaken the paper, and it can crack. And that's why I like the score tape sheet. I'm just going to center it there, and now you can see how much stronger our book has become. Okay, let's just get everything down. my edges and now we can there we go create our crease Got a little bit there but I am going to use this cover um, with my di a different paper and so I am planning on having lace there and I can see I did go through because I can see the score tape sheet but we're not lost it's okay um, I'm going to just do some strengthening here because I will have lace on these edges with the other paper I'm going to use with this. Because I'm going to use the craft for the rest of the tutorial. So um, you'll see now as we put down our hinges on the spine, you see very little. So if you want to mat, I did do a double matting. I'm not going to. We're just going to put our hinges down like I did in the live. And so we're going to add our adhesive. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the top and bottom and of course the sides. For the sides I'm going to push in those two end hinge pieces and hold it because you should have about an eighth of an inch kind of all the way around. Well, yeah, about an eighth of an inch all the way around is the goal.
Okay, now I can grab my oops, spatula. I'm going to flatten it. So I can really burnish it down. When you're using a wet adhesive, it's important to get it spread. Okay. Now, we're going to let that dry a little bit. I'm just going to throw a couple of clothespins on. really help hold those edges and I have created four of the pages and I will do the fifth with you I'll turn the right way so as you can see they're not a pocket page they fold over Ooh, should have checked that when I glued it and they will go nicely on the hinge makes it so easy. So I like to put the pages in, but then we'll create all of our uh, folds and flaps, and then we'll mat them and then put them on the pages. So to keep the video short, I went ahead and cut my five, eight, and they're on your cutting guide. You need five, eight by eight and a half, and you need five, eight and a half by eight and a half. So you're going to put the eight and a half by eight and a half in your scoreboard. It's eight and a half all the way around, so it doesn't matter what size. It's going to be at eight and a half anyway. And you're going to score all five of them at one half inch. And when you're done, you'll take your eight by eight and a half. Making sure this is where it belongs. We'll add our adhesive to the hinge piece. I like to fold it over to the outside and that way it keeps my tags from getting caught up when they're when you're pushing them in or pulling them out of your page. Make sure that you do open it to make that you don't want any glue on the inside. Now sometimes You'll notice one side is a little bit longer than the other. It's really not going to matter when you put it on the hinge. But I like, I do like to straighten it out. So I just put it in my big cutter. And take that little bit of that edge off. But it's not necessary because it folds over the hinge. And so it doesn't, doesn't change the way it fits or anything. And the only thing I like to do in putting my page in is adding, I put the hinge part in the back where I put hinge my page together and I'm butting it right up against the hinge there. I'm going to add my adhesive. So you can use score tape with this. Just go ahead and put it on your hinge at the top. I just used my wet adhesive. So your page and your hinges should be the same size. And bring that over to make sure nothing, you don't want anything, you don't want the page to come to the bottom of your hinge. You want it to be, you know, a hair above it. Now I'll add adhesive to the top part of the hinge and along at the bottom. So when doing this, you could also bring it up higher if you only wanted a four or six inch um, tag to go inside of there. And that's kind of what's nice. And then also nothing will get caught in the bottom of your page when you pull it out your tags or when you're trying to put it back in we don't have a you know we don't have another piece of paper bend inside of there 
and again let's spread the glue around so you're going to push a little bit hard flip it over I'm going to do the same and then I'll take my second page here in the back laying it on top to make sure my pages are all even just pulling this one because it looks like it's a little bit okay looked a little off there we go that over burnish it really well and then I'll add my adhesive to the top and along the bottom I'm just pinching that as I'm rubbing the paper towel across there and any glue that comes out it'll pick up and then your page will be closed. Now this is the one I didn't open and check so it lays I've got some glue there but it's fine it just needed to be pushed open a little bit Okay, page four.
that glue really came out. Yeah, that's why I like to have a paper towel close at hand. And our page five. Sorry, I'm. It's it, everybody's gone home. It is a little bit late, <laughs> so you might hear hubby up there coughing. He's not sick. He's just been out in the cold all day. I mean, all day, and it's twenty what twenty some degrees out on the tractor. Yeah, not good for the lungs. But you got to do what you got to do, right? Get the work done. Whoops. Back here. So now, just like that, no stress. As you can see how easy it is to get your pages in your book. And that's what I love about it. Um, in fact, there's just not enough time in the day, enough hours. I want to make more books because look how quick. Um, you can get them together, and yet it's sturdy. Um, they're going to last. But you've got that nice pocket page, and I, I just love double pages. I don't like to do them, you know, just single, because I feel like we need that weight, especially with the December daily. We've got a lot of flips and flaps, and so it does need a good, good base. Now, one thing I'm going to check... I'm going to go back through just with my pokey tool. Well, no, I think that's fine. As long as you don't have, like, you can kind of see even with your finger now. If you just rub it up on there. As long as you spread that glue really well. Once in a while, you shouldn't have any open areas. Oh, we do. So clean the tip of your glue off. And I can see it there. It's like, see, air gets in there. Or I didn't get enough glue and push it down. But I don't want to get glue on my cardstock either. So I just want to get a little bit in there. It's like we're giving an injection, right? It looks good. So I hope that this helps to see better from what we were doing earlier when we had such pixelating the cover. So there it is in brown. And like I said, I am going to be continuing the tutorial in the craft artisan cardstock. And if you are wanting the original color, I used the olive green, which is just gorgeous. Not olive, military green. It's on the website. And it's white. And I can't remember what color is what color. So there is our cover tutorial. And that way you can go back if you need and um, see what you missed because of our, we thought it was internet problems, but I do think maybe I've got a camera that was going out. Good thing I had an extra one. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you on the next tutorial. Bye-bye.